Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. There's a new public update preview that just dropped, or in other words, a sneak peek at the upcoming patch. This patch is not live yet, but you can opt in and try it if you like, and the devs are looking for people to test it out. It has a couple of interesting balance changes targeting a few civs that have really been struggling, as well as a ton of good quality of life features. In this video, we'll go through the patch and hit the highlights of what will be coming down the pike. To start with some of the general changes, the first one is a new drop-off resource command for villagers and fishing ships. This can be set to a hotkey, and is a straightforward way to get those units to drop off resources at the nearest spot, and will then automatically go back to work. This is going to be particularly useful for villagers collecting from sheep. Normally, you had to right-click the town center and then back to the sheep, introducing a short delay, whereas now you just press that button and they instantly drop off what they're carrying seamlessly, which will be useful if you're a couple of food short for the next villager for example. Another new command is the Seek Shelter button for villagers. Basically, it's like the town bell in that they'll look for the nearest spot to hide, whether that be a town center, castle, etc., but unlike the town bell, only applies to the selected villagers. This is something AoE4 had at launch, and is definitely a welcome change, making garrisoning a lot smoother. This is combined with a new All Back to Work command that puts them back to whatever they were doing. It'll be a slight adjustment to get used to, and now gives maybe a confusing amount of ways to kick villagers out of a town center, but with practice should be a nice change for defenders, and give even less reason to ever use the town bell. Another change is that units in line formation only regroup into a column after a move or attack move command more than 30 tiles away. Part of the problem with regrouping previously was that any move over 10 tiles away they would go into a long snaking column. Basically, they're going to stay now in that wider line formation a lot more of the time when microing, which hopefully removes some of the issues, and my expectation is this is going to make micro feel a lot smoother. Patrol, on the other hand, always forms a column regardless of distance, making attack move feel like it might be the superior choice now to avoid path and confusion and extra reorganization. Another really big quality of life change is there's now going to be smarter garrisoning of units into siege and transport ships, where by selecting one it recruits other transports, rams, or siege towers within a few tile radius, and units sort themselves out automatically instead of you having to break them up yourself. You can right click while holding control to specifically garrison in one without recruiting any others, keeping the old behavior, but in general I think players are going to stick with the new way, as it is much easier. Now this makes rams and siege towers a lot more interesting in the late game for infantry civs, as for rams in particular you get extra attack and speed benefits for every infantry garrisoned, which previously felt like it was just too much work to do. Like auto farming, I think this is going to be very popular when players get their hands on it. Another little change is that mule carts are no longer grabbed with alt dragging. I remember specifically mentioning this would be a good change in the mule cart video I made a few months ago, and I'm glad to see the devs thinking along the same lines. This should make garrisoning villagers in a wood line a lot easier for Georgians and Armenians, and if you like the old behavior you can still drag select like usual and grab the villagers plus the mule cart, while this just gives an extra option with holding alt while dragging. Now the next change I think is going to lead to some confusion, and has to do with siege. They say that siege weapons will now do their full damage in the radius of the projectile, instead of the center point. If you're not well versed in AoE2 mechanic minutia, this might sound huge, and it's easy to interpret this to mean you'll be flattening huge armies with mangonels now, but that's not what's happening, as they're saying the radius of the projectile and not the radius of the entire blast damage around it. What this actually means is you still see the regular gradient, where you get the most damage hitting something straight on as opposed to just off center. Instead, this is targeting a niche issue where you would directly hit something, but it wouldn't count as being a perfect hit for technical and obscure reasons having to do with hitboxes and where the projectiles are aiming, which I explored in a video last year. As an example of a change this makes, a mangano with 40 attack plus 15 bonus against siege should one-shot a heavy scorpion with 55 HP, but previously they didn't unless the heavy scorpion was moving toward the mangonel. Now it does the damage it should when it lands a perfect shot, regardless of where on the unit its main projectile hits. This is more addressing an edge case than the major shakeup it might sound like, and just means direct shots from the mangonel and bombard cannon do the damage they're meant to, with nothing else about area of effect damage changed. Moving on, they're also making a few prior cheat codes available to everyone, which previously had to be earned through events. The first is grab your pitchforks, turning the player's villagers into Flemish militia. The next is my CPU can handle it, boosting a player's pop cap to 1000. The last is Flemish reformation, turning all villagers into monks. Honestly, they're not the coolest cheat codes in the world, but there you go. Also, for players looking for more wacky settings, you can now unlock additional more extreme map sizes. 
To do this, you go to properties in your game and can type more map sizes with underscores into the launch options. If you then go into your game, you have an extra small map and a few other large sizes available to play around with. Now, in addition to the usual long list of small bug fixes, one last general change to mention is they bring up pathfinding. I've learned to take these with a grain of salt, and there's a bit of trust that has to be earned back at this point with pathing changes, not introducing more bugs than they fix. Fingers crossed this makes things better, though I think the 10 to 30 tile change for regrouping alone should help a lot with archers. Now, in addition to these general changes, there are also a few targeted changes to some civilizations, so let's take a look at those now. The first is the Georgians, who have been massively struggling on the ladder, particularly in very short games, where they've been knocked out before they can really get rolling. The first change to target that problem is they no longer start with minus 50 food, so their mule cart is effectively free now, and should make their Dark Age a lot cleaner. The next change is their cavalry are going to regenerate 15% of their HP per minute instead of the old staggered HP healing. It's not immediately obvious if this is a buff or a nerf at first, but if you look at the numbers, this is a huge upgrade in the healing rate for scouts with bloodlines, nearly doubling the rate they do that. This is then a 50-80% to 80 improvement for knights with or without bloodlines, while the cavalry archer is basically the same and the manaspa has a slightly lower benefit. Then in Imperial Age, the net result is generally similar or slightly better healing, with heavy cavalry archer actually being worse off. My takeaway is this really seems to be trying to boost scouts into knights. It works out as a good way to target that specifically, with surprisingly little collateral damage or extra help for other units. On top of this change, the Manaspa's training time is then slowing down from 11 to 14 seconds, and it now takes 7 nearby units instead of 5 to boost their attack by 1. This change is obviously to slow the snowballing of that unit, and with the cleaner Dark Age, better feudal scout healing, and better knight healing, seems like they're really trying to target the early to mid game where Georgians were weakest, while then cutting down on the oppressive late game. Overall, it just seems like a very smart set of changes to me. Next up is for the Incas, who have just a small fix to the Eagle Warrior and Skirmisher line. I usually don't mention small fixes like this, and hadn't noticed the food values were miscalculated before, but both of those units are now discounted by one more food each. Moving on to the Italians, this is another sieve like the Georgians that have really been struggling. Their change is that the Genoese crossbow's training time is dropping from 18 to 14 seconds, making it easier to mass. Italians definitely could use a buff, and especially on Arabia, we're really tanking in the mid game against a lot of cavalry civilizations, ironically enough, considering their unique unit is supposed to specialize against those, and we'll see if this has the desired effect and can help that unit out. And finally, the Tatars are also getting a change that their flaming camel will no longer require timbered siegecraft to unlock. You just get access to them in Imperial Age at the Siege Workshop, though their training time goes up from 20 to 30 seconds to reflect how much easier those are to build in castles. Remember, their attack bonuses are mostly anti-elephant, with a little anti-cavalry, camel, siege, and building as well. They certainly have their use cases, and feel enough like siege units that it's probably the building that makes the most sense. There's then a new challenge called the Siege. This is based around the 1453 Siege of Constantinople, and can be played solo or two-player co-op against two AIs or two other human players. I'm not sure if this is based on the Constantinople scenarios in the Victors and Vanquished DLC or not, and haven't tried it myself, but I like their continuing with the idea of the patch challenges. So that's the new patch, with what looks like tons of quality of life features I'm looking forward to, as well as some very nice balance changes to the Georgians in particular. Like I said, you can opt in and try it out, or wait for later in the month when it goes live. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.